How did the relationship come about between a winery and a distillery? Um, so Bob and Wayne of Bass and Flinders came to us oh, three, maybe four years ago and said, we're looking for a winery to work with. We want to make fantastic cognac style brandy, if you like, but it's made like That's cognac. Um, and we need a winery to make the base wine for us because it's made by making, fermenting um, a, a wine, a white wine, a neutral kind of white wine, and then they distill it. And then they put it into French oak barrels. Five or six years later, they can start bottling it. So I thought, that sounds really awesome. I spent a lot of time in France. so um, I, You studied there, right? Yeah, I did my winemaking degree there at the University of Burgundy. So um, I didn't drink a lot of cognac as a student, but uh, it's lovely stuff. So I thought, if somebody's doing that in Australia, that's really exciting. I'd love to be involved with it. Which wine in particular do they use? Uh, we use Chardonnay. Mm-hmm. And they're pleased with well. the quality yeah, that it. they get? Yeah, it's fantastic. It's very yeah. exciting. I think the project's really fun, really yeah. exciting. It's still small, but I think it's going to make a lot of noise. Mm. Yeah. So if we go to our gin or our vodka, our vodka is really unusual in that it's Australia's first grape spirit vodka. And I think there's only one other that I know of in the world, but there may be others that I don't know of. It's quite unusual to make a vodka for grape spirit. Why is it unusual? Um, because traditionally it came from Russia. Yeah. And the Russians and Polish people had grains mm. and uh, um, well, it was mainly grain based, some was potato based. Mm -hmm. The other difference, besides being the only uh, distiller here on the peninsula, uh, all our products are made from grape spirits. So we have uh, a range of products. We have uh, vodka, we have grappa, we have uh, gin, uh, we have limoncello. In fact, there used to be a Pinot vineyard here before and I was just never that excited by the wine. So we pulled it out and we planted Chardonnay and it is absolutely beautiful. One of our favourite Chardonnay batches. And we uh, aim to produce a cognac style uh, product. Now we can't call it cognac but the process we use is uh, based on the same te techniques as the, that they use. We take, uh, we select the grapes, we have them made into a Chardonnay wine um, and then we distill it. We do a double distillation process on our pot still, um, and then we will uh, mature it in French oak barrels, which we import from France, the Limousin oak barrels, uh, to mature the, uh, the product in. This is uh, one of our first uh, barrels of aged spirit, one of the ones we did back in 2011. So it's been in the barrel since 2011, but because it's been in a very small barrel, um, it, it's uh, and the surface area, the ratio of the surface area of, of the uh, the wood to the spirit uh, means that it uh, matures at a much faster rate than if we put it into a larger barrel. As a winemaker, I love making Chardonnay because it's a winemaker's wine. You can do any number of things to the process during the winemaking and you end up with a different winer as a result. The grapes always speak louder than anything else, but the hand of the winemaker is very strong in Chardonnay. What does the hand of the winemaker well, do? You can, you can crop high or lower. That changes the flavours. Mm -hmm. You can um, de-stem or whole bunch press when it comes into the winery. You can sulphur early or sulphur late. You can have whole leaves or you can settle overnight and then rack the next day to have a clearer juice. You can ferment in tank or you can ferment in barrels. You can ferment in new barrels or old barrels. You can ferment in French barrels or American barrels. You can ferment in large barrels or small barrels. Every single one of these things changes. We grow sustainably as much as possible so we don't use pesticides, um, insecticides so on. We use copper and sulphur only as a rule and uh, I think that's respecting the whole environment because if the ground is healthy then the microbes are healthy in the vine, in the, in the ground, they'll grow healthy plants. Whereas if you're killing the flora and the bugs, micro bugs in microorganisms, you're upsetting the whole balance of life in the vineyard and the vines won't be happy and then 
they won't make great fruit. Yes, what we have here is a, a very small uh, traditional materials, traditional style, alembic pot still. Um, and I use this to explain to people the process that we use in our distillation. It's made from uh, very traditional materials, copper. Uh, alembic is uh, a very ancient uh, Arabic word, alembic. Um, and the traditions uh, of uh, distilling go back uh, into history. Um, copper was used at the time because it was readily available, uh, easy to work, and because uh, it transfers heat readily. So what happens is that the, uh, we heat the wine from about uh, 73 degrees Celsius. The uh, alcohol starts to vaporise, uh, and from there up to about 91 degrees Celsius, the alcohol will boil off. Water will go with it, passes up the cap, down the swan's neck, uh, and into the condenser, where it condenses in the top of the coil and runs out the bottom as a clear spirit. And in the second run, what we do is we... When we're doing the vodka, we will do four distillations. We're not putting flavours in, but each time we're stripping out the heads and the tails. So each time we're cleaning the spirit. So what we end up with a very clean spirit, but as, as uh, I explained, it still has a flavour from the grape, very subtle flavour and sweetness from the grapes. Mm. Okay, so we're just measuring the alcohol level of the spirit coming off the still now. It's about 68% at the moment. Is that good? So, so that's good. So we'll continue our distillation until that reaches about 60% uh, alcohol. So this is the last um, distillation cycle for the season. So it's the end of the 18 tonne of grapes that we uh, source for this year. And this, is, this product will go into gin for the coming year. And why do you love being a winemaker? Or do you? I love being a winemaker. <laughs> it's the best of everything. Why? I'm a country girl, so my dad was a farmer. So it's, it's, you, can't, you can take the girl out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the girl. And I always felt that when I was living in the city. I was a scientist originally, a biochemist, so uh, there's a lot of chemistry. We, we get to you know, use the lab quite a lot. When you entered the profession, were there many women and has it been hard to make your position and, and get recognition as a woman winemaker? No, it's, there's no really big deal. Of course there aren't as many women winemakers as men. But Why? Traditionally it's a bloke's job, so it's just a matter of growing through into the new tradition, which is probably 50-50. Mm. Um, there probably in my uni year there were probably half and half women and men I would think your year yeah. of what? at university mm -hmm. doing winemaking yeah so uh, now on the peninsula there are probably half a dozen women and maybe a couple of dozen men but it's a new industry mm -hmm. down here and the, next, uh, the next product here is uh, a limoncello uh, very traditional Italian uh, digestive liqueur. Uh, we peel the lemons to get the uh, to get the zest. Uh, we we uh, soak those in um, pure alcohol uh, to extract the oils and the flavours from the lemons, and then we add sugar and more alcohol and a little bit of time to produce a uh, very pleasant after dinner liqueur. And how do you feel about the whole wine industry here? It's not the same as the Australian wine industry. People say, oh, there's a glut in, of Australian wine. Mm -hmm. There's no glut of our wine. We are the Mornington Peninsula wine industry, and that's quite a specialised subset. In what way? Yeah, because our wines are in the very top 1% or 2% of the best and the highest priced wines in Australia. Mm -hmm. So this is a 2014 wine as well, so it's brand new. It's Shiraz. And what is it? What do you think of this Shiraz? Look at the colour. It's fantastic. Beautiful. Um, I think it's going to be a really good Shiraz. You happy with it? Oh, it's. Uh... It's incredible how it's changed and uh, how, uh, how much character it now has uh, after such a short time. Mm. You can see how complex uh, the colour, the aroma and the flavour is. Um, it's going to make a very nice product. Mm.